Welcome to lesson six. If you've been following along, you've already got your own code. If you want to jump right in, you can just go to the link in the description, grab all the code from lesson five, open it up, install the NPM packages, and then just get the server up and running like I've done here with NPM run dev. That's what I've got right over here. And you can see we're on the about page and this little link we set up last time is working. I can go back to the home page, and now I'm at the home page. Now what we don't yet have is a blog page. So we're going to work this time on kind of the basics of routing. Now we've already added one route and that's our about route right here. And all the routes as a reminder are anything that's in the pages directory. Now you can actually have nested routes as well and that's what we're gonna have. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up right over here and we're gonna add a new folder. And I'll just call this blog. Inside the blog, I'm gonna start with an index.astro page. Now it's an index page, so it's kind of the root level of that blog directory. So I'm gonna actually copy over everything from right here and we're gonna paste it in directly here. Now, because I'm down one more level, I actually need to go up one more level like this, and this should all work. And now I can just say over here, something like blog. Again, Astro is gonna create this route for me directly. So if I come over here, now I'm in the blog, and it says blog, now I'm at about, now I'm at the home. So that's all there is to kind of the very bare bone basics of routing. What I wanna do is think about a couple other use cases. One, what if we come over here, we start typing, and we go to a file that doesn't exist? Well, we're going to get this default 404 page not found. I wouldn't mind something a little bit more custom than that, so we're going to create our own 404 page here in a second. But I also want to go ahead and fill out this about page, which will give me a chance to talk through images, which we'll use in a second in the blogs. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an images folder in our public directory. Now remember, public is kind of at the base level of the server. And what I'm going to have you do is grab all the images from the GitHub repo link for lesson six down below and add them directly in this. I'm going to do the same thing and be right back with you. All right, hopefully you grabbed all those. There's six post images, an image default, and a headshot. Now for now, we're just going to use the headshot. So I'm going to go ahead and close that up. We'll use all the rest of those in a little bit. Next, I'm going to open up my about page. And then let me close down the sidebar. And we're going to actually customize this about page to look a little bit different. So to start with, I'm going to just have a section tag in here. This section is gonna have two classes. I'm gonna have a container class and an about class. And then finally, so that people know what this section is about, I'm gonna add an aria label here that says something like about me. This section itself is gonna have two things. It's gonna have an image, first of all, and I'm gonna point this simply to forward slash images slash headshot dot JPEG. Now that's at the root level, so it should pull from that public folder. For the alt, I'm just gonna say like my headshot, then I'm gonna go ahead and give it a width of something like 200 and a height of maybe 330. So if I save that, that should show up and there it is. I've got some styling in our global CSS file so that that's how it's supposed to show up right like that. And then as a sibling to this image, we're gonna have a div with a class of content. This is gonna have an H1 with a class of H1. Now I separate out my classes from my semantic tags so that way I can have like a H2 tag that happens to be styled like an H3 or whatever and that's typically how I like to do it. We're gonna just call this something like my blog. Next, I'm gonna have a paragraph tag and inside of it, I'm using Emmet here as an abbreviation thing and this comes default with VS Code. You can get it in pretty much any code editor. I'm just gonna type like lorem, I don't know, 40, something like that. And that drops in a bunch of lorem ipsum. Now finally, let's use that link component we created last time. So I'm gonna start typing link, hit enter, and then close this out, and it should have added it in up here, and it did. And what I'm going to do is just remember what I need. So if I hit control and spacebar since we typed it, I now know I need to type in href. In this case, what I want is this to be a link to email me. So I'll say mail to, and I'll say chris at codinginpublic.dev. For the style, I want this to be primary. For the text, I want this to say contact me. I'll go ahead and save that, and that should all pop in like this, and it's that black color because I set it to primary. Now, one other thing to think about when it comes to just general accessibility and the way your page should be laid out, we don't really have a main content tag yet. So if I were to add that, where would you add it? I'm going to add it in my main layout because that's where all the pages are kind of slotted in. If I grab all that text and hit Command-Shift-P, I can type wrap with abbreviation, and then simply type here main and hit enter, and just like that, all my main content on my pages will have this main tag wrapped around it. All right, now that we've got this about page, next let's set up our 404 page. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this, open up the sidebar, and if you just add a file in here called 404.astro in the main pages directory, so in other words, at the same level as like your index and any other top level routes, then you can do the same basic thing. So I'm gonna paste this in here. Then Astro treats that as your 404 page. 
Now, if I come over here and I add something crazy on the end of this that doesn't exist, it's going to bring me to this page, which happens to look the same as my about page right now. So that was not a very helpful example. Now we're going to change this up just a little bit. So this will say like page not found. And we can just remove this description and use our default, which I think is something like uh, my blog thoughts or something like that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and strip out this entire section here. And this time we'll just have a div with the class of container. And as a refresher, you can actually add styles directly inside of here with like inline styling. You can do this a couple ways. You could just add it as a string like you would in HTML because again, Astro components are basically just HTML with superpowers, or I can use more of a, like a CSS in JS style. So that's what I'll do here just to remind you that you can do that. So I could say like display grid, I could say place items, center, text align, center. And then finally, we're gonna use one of the custom variables I have set up. So I'll save that and that should be a blank page for now. But inside this div, I wanna add a couple things. I wanna add another enclosed div here with an H1 with a class of H1. This will say, Welp, this is awkward. All right, this is awkward like that. And then below I'll have a paragraph that says, we seem to have misplaced something. Now finally, as a sibling to that div, let's go ahead and add back in a link tag. In this case, I want to point it back to my homepage. So my href will be my homepage. My style is going to be secondary. My text is going to say go home. And then finally, let's go ahead and add one of those icons. So again, I need to pass in an object. The name of the, the icon is going to be tabler home. And that I'm just getting from the icons repository that I showed you in the last video. And then as far as the side, let's have it be on the right. Now here's the magic of setting up those components very quickly. If I hit save, here's what we get. Isn't that cool? Now I'm noticing that it's kind of smashed. And I think that's because while trying to type out this custom thing, one of the reasons I didn't have you do that, I mistyped it. So this should be space, small, and now you see that that's what I have. Small, small didn't make much sense anyhow. All right, so there we go. We've created two different routes. The about route, we've basically made a look how it's supposed to look. And then the 404 page now looks how it's supposed to look. So any page they go to will have something, even if it just says go back home. Now we do have a blog route, but there's nothing much there. So that's what we're going to focus in on now. What I want to do is inside this nested blog route, I want to start adding some files. Now, once again, I want you to go to the repository, go to lesson six and just grab all the uh, the markdown files inside of this blog and add them directly in here. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back with you. All right, so here we are. We've got the six files, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are all just posts and you'll notice that they're just markdown. Now you can just use markdown or you can also use MDX, which essentially will let you write JavaScript inside markdown files. I won't be going over that in this series just because we're going to try to keep it as basic as possible. It's basically the same thing, except you can write JavaScript inside of these. You can see here, I've got this MDX only features section open in the docs. And basically it, you can actually use like variables up top and use them down below. You can also um, actually import components, including Astro components and use them directly in Markdown files. Other than that though, it's pretty basic. All you have to do is install it. And you can do that if you use this MDX integration. Astro add. MDX will do it for you and install everything for you. So I'll just let you know that that exists, but we're going to be using Markdown files. Now inside here, you've got front matter, which is similar as the Astro files. And that's because that's how Markdown works. You have a front matter section, and then you have all your content. Now in this case, I've just got a bunch of random lorem ipsum, but let me talk you through some of the other properties we have in here. I've got a title and you can see that this is just a string. I've got some long like this one or some very short. I've got a date. I've got an author. I've got an image that's going to point to one of the images that you imported earlier. It has an alt and a, an SRC, a description of what this is about. Like a, this would be for SEO and other things, whether or not it's draft. And then I've got a category connected to it. So all these are the same. They just happen to have different things. And that way you've got like kind of real blog posts to play with. All right. So the last thing I'm going to do is just add some very basic links just so we can see how that works. So let's have a UL here, maybe inside here I'll have LI and this will be a link. And I'm going to point to as a relative path here, post one like this, and we'll just say post uh, one. Now, when I just grab all of this right here, I'm going to hold option and shift in the down arrow and let's copy down a few more. And then I'm going to grab, actually, let's see, let me grab all of this right here. I'll hit command shift L that will get me access to all of those backspace. And then I've got an extension called text pastry one to X. We'll just type those out one to one to six. You can also do this if you want to, you can just expand it and emit this way. I'll just move over this way and do the same thing. 
Now, if I save, I'll have links to all of these. I made the fatal error of not adding a dot before this. So let me go ahead and do that so that it's a relative path, not at the, the root level. So let's restart this, click over here, and now you see that Google Translate is trying to translate Latin for me. All right, so there we go. We get access to all these. Now, we don't yet have them wrapping anything, and you can see that none of my styling is taking effect, but that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. How do we add layouts to markdown files? I'll catch you there.